This time on the show, defending against cookie hijacking attacks, man in the middle tools for Linux, fingerprinting web servers the easy way, managing multiple SSH sessions, and tracking government spy satellites. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. FreshBooks online invoicing and GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. Uh, my name is Shannon Morse. And this is your <laughs> weekly dose of Technolust. Ooh, oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. What is this? This is a Chimay Red. Is this a beer? It's a premier ale. It's a corked beer. It's pretty, it's pretty tasty, I gotta yeah. say. Yeah. All right, this is your weekly dose of Technolust. We've got great stuff going on this week. Mm, We're talking good. about a lot of man in the middle of stuff. We've got some OS fingerprinting. We've got some spy satellites. Mm. And uh, we're finding out if you are doing the Leia buns. No, no, uh, actually, we're recording this on the same day that the episode just came out. So I guess we have I've, I've started to, getting the started Twitters. Getting the Twitters? Oh, yeah. geez. All right, well, I guess we'll find out next week. What do you, uh, Paul, what, what, do you, what are you having? Are you having some good stuff over there? Paul, the camera guy, yeah. yeah the what, what's going on? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you got. Red Rocket. Red Rocket! I don't know. We just figured we'd, you know, do it old school like we used to and it you know, good. mix it up, have some, have some brews. Mm. What are you having? I'm having Coke, Coca Cola. I'm driving home today, so I'm not drinking. Right. Because I'm good. No, instead you loaded it up on candy. Yes. Like, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get right into the show. Candy! First off, I, need to, I need to say thank you, dude, because check this out. We got this wonderful note here from uh, Jeff from uh, Upland, California. Upland? I don't know. It's, uh, it's it actually up? down south. It's down oh, south. It's, <laughs> it's down south. It's by LA, right? So um, he actually wrote in and sent us, get this, not only did he send us Windows NT4. <laughs> oh. That's dude. cute. It's <gasps> oh my god. Duke Nukem 3D. <gasps> oh That's my god. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He also sent dude, in. Dude, uh, will this even work on our in, machines anymore? I, I don't know. Maybe with DOSBox. Maybe oh, we could do a segment on that. He, he went ahead and also sent in some discs for uh, Microsoft Arcade, Windows 95, some C++ stuff, uh, mm. Windows NT4 Enterprise Edition, Terminal Server Edition, and Windows 95 with the USB support. Nice. Yeah. So I'm figuring those. Is gonna go up here, Beautiful. hanging out with uh, the rest of the goodies. You we have know. like a thrift store going on. <laughs> <by that. laughs> We're gonna have a computer museum by the end of the season because it's all about 548 Market Street, number 39371, San Francisco, California, <laughs> 94104. Yes. Yeah. You wanna get into some headlines? Sure. Do you wanna mention the party oh, right. that we yeah. just had? Right, we just had a party. That was so much fun. Dude, we had Dual Core there, we had Dale Chase. They it was amazing guys watching those guys like flow off of each other. Seriously, man. those they guys were so they cool. seem like they've been like doing Working live together shows forever. together for years. Yeah, yeah. And they had just oh, like man, put that together good. over Skype. It was awesome. Yeah. And That's we had the silent auction, you know, it was kinda just like, hey, let's have a silent auction. Okay. And we made right. We made three hundred dollars on all the little. But that's not for stuff. us, right? No, it's a hundred percent is going to the Red Cross. I donated about half of it today, and I'm donating the other half tomorrow. Excellent. So, yay! I'm so happy we made some money for those guys. That's awesome. Yay! Sweet. Made me feel good. Made Hell my yeah. heart feel good. Yeah, it was a good party. And I if feel you warm didn't, inside. if you guys didn't make it to the party, stay tuned for announcements about upcoming uh, Hack Five on the Road, doing some bar camps some maybe in your town. Yes. So. You know, maybe then you'll be able to enjoy a Chimay Red with us, or, or whatever you have in your city. Like, like Yingling. 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 I know. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. I was right? like, that's mm, where you went. Dang it. Maybe we should go to the East Coast so we could have our Yingling again. Right, well, I'm going back for Thanksgiving, <laughs> but until then, it's time for the hacker headlines. Jailbreaking is fun, isn't it? Again, <laughs> jailbreaking is fun again. Red Snow has just been released by the dev team as a nice and easy untethered jailbreak for iOS 4.3.1. It's available on Windows and OS X for all of your Apple devices, except for the iPad 2, because apparently the security on the new tablet has been beefed up a little bit. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there, and I'm sure it won't take them long to figure out a way around it. Nice. Yes. 
Now check this out. While we don't typically report on the hijinks of Anonymous, the group recently targeted Sony's PlayStation.com with a denial of service attack and left the website periodically inaccessible. The group Ooh. released a manifesto announcing Operation Sony and pronounced Geo, the GeoHot lawsuit that we've been following as an unforgivable offense against free speech and internet freedom, which are the primary sources of free lulls. <laughs> yeah, you know how the, That's awesome. they feel about the free yes. lulls. Now, Sony later went ahead and tweeted that the PSN may be inaccessible due to sporadic, sporadic maintenance. maintenance. <laughs> you know, you can never do too much sporadic maintenance. Yeah, you know, I watched that YouTube video of Anonymous uh, releasing that information to Sony saying, hey, we're on to you. And uh, it's kind of a creepy video. You, you, you could do, it. you could honestly do a podcast called This Week in Anonymous. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, now it's going to come out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just uh, be on the lookout. And if you've got some spam very soon, not from Anonymous in your inbox, it may be because of a security breach at Epsilon. Epsilon is the world's largest email marketing service. They say that the only information that the hackers got were names and email addresses. I've gotten a lot of these emails so far from companies all saying the same thing. Your email address may have been exposed to unauthorized entry into Epsilon system, blah, 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 but it still means I'm now vulnerable to phishing scams and all sorts of stuff like that. So just be aware, don't give out your info to any kind of weird emails that you see popping up from Victoria's Secret or whoever. Or wherever it is you shop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tom, we should have a segment on phishing scams, too, so but far. mainly yeah. just making sure that you're at the website that you think you're at, yeah. uh, you know, Bank of America, not Bank of America, yes. dot com or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of phishing scams, the R uh, RSA recently outlined how their network was compromised in the much publicized attack on their network weeks ago. Oh. It turns out over a two day period, attackers sent two different phishing emails to employees with subjects like 2011 recruitment plan, which contained an Excel spreadsheet. This oh, was actually in their yeah. spam buckets, but they went into the spam folder, one of them retrieved it, opened up the, uh, the spreadsheet attachment, which contained a zero day vulnerability for an Adobe Flash uh, uh, exploit, and basically from Don't there open the attacker, those attachments. yeah, the attacker was able to go ahead and install a customized version of the Poison Ivy remote administration tool, and uh, basically from there escalate their privileges across the network. So you know, <laughs> yeah, the uh, vulnerability Oops. for Flash has since been patched, and RSA claims, excuse me, that the seeds used to generate RSA keys have not been compromised. Uh oh. Well, good job, RSA. <laughs> and this is just plain awesome to me. I'm absolutely kind of excited about this. So you guys remember the Commodore 64, right? Commodore 64, yep. of course, of course you do. Well, apparently Commodore USA is coming out with a brand spanking new C64 with some nice PC specs with advertisements alongside the release of the Tron Legacy DVD and also on Blu-ray. No detail, details on the specs just yet, but I'm gonna be checking back on their website to find out more because Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's not the same Commodore though. You know the, the Commodore the Commodore family, that whole name has been sold like umpteen billion times. They've resurrected in 97. Uh, and so you sold think again. they're just bringing it back to like, be like, yeah, that, this is the same the brand name. Yeah, in 05 they came to the uh, US, in 2010 hmm. they started doing these Basically, it's a mini ITX board inside of an old school case. I don't know. It doesn't have this. It doesn't it pull on my heartstrings the, the same, same heart. way. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it has the same soul as the C64. It's like a Centurion versus a Cent Cylon. You know, the old school ones versus uh -huh. the new ones. Yeah. It's like, mm -mm. What are they? Just the damn, old school damn, ones are damn just so much more jobs. cooler. Yeah, yeah I know, jobs. right? All right. Hey, why don't you say we before we get to the crack the code challenge? Check in with Kirby. We need to talk to Kirby. Find out about the Internet Protocol of the Week. Do you have what it takes to compete in the Crack the Code Challenge? Brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Test your skills in our private lab network and bid for the title of Supreme Elite Hacksaw. Winners will be featured on a future episode of Hack 5. Our next event will be Sunday, April 24th. Mark it on your calendars at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Visit hack5.org slash challenge for all of the details. We'll be live streaming at hack5.org slash live throughout the day, so I'll see you there. And now we'd like to thank GoToAssist Express for making this challenge possible. As you guys know, there are a variety of tools on the market that let you remotely work on another person's computer. But the one that I trust and rely on every day is GoToAssist Express, brought to you by Citrix. 
pretty much because it's got exceptional performance. It's so easy to use in just a click. You get a code, you send someone, someone over to fastsupport.com, they enter it in, there's nothing more to it. You're on their screen and they got some of the best security in the biz end to end. You don't need to worry about anybody sniffing up in the middle. So there's no IT maintenance, no updates, nothing to download. It's so great and uh, it's so fast. You'll be viewing your client's computer and troubleshooting it in, in no time at all. So you can move on to something more exciting than tech support, right? And the client's computers even, you can even connect to someone's computer even if they're not at their computer. You can be like, hey, it's cool. I set up remote administration on there. You just go ahead and take lunch. When you get back, your computer will be, you know, fresh and new. So you don't have to deal with the client, right? Yeah. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash HAK5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com slash HAK5 for a 30-day free trial. Now recently we've been having a lot of fun with man in the middle attacks. Shannon showed you how to perform an ARB cache poisoning attack on Windows using Kenable, and then I showed you how to detect that using XARP, which is a really spiffy cross. Windows Linux, goodness, right? Now, she even then showed us how to sidejack using Fire Sheep, and honestly, eavesdropping is just plain fun. So this week, I thought we'd do a little demo and show you how to do it with a couple of tools for Linux. Now, again, the premise is the same. We're going to be doing some command line stuff here, some tools that will basically be telling our victim that we're the router and vice versa. Now, the tools we're going to be using are DriftNet, which is a suite for you know all sorts of man-in-the-middle attacks, our poisoning, and all of that stuff, and DriftNet. Um, now, a lot of people have been asking about DriftNet and basically what it is are these nets that go in the ocean with these buoys and they fish and there's it's really a big controversy they're no good you kind of i'm not really for them because you know if there's like yeah, a big storm and then the ships come back and the nets are gone and then those nets go fishing on forever but there's no one to collect them and then the fish just get tangled in it and they're considered ghost nets and it's just no good uh, the other drift net is actually a program for your computer and you can get it if you're using Linux, and uh, if you're on Ubuntu like I am, it's really easy. Type sudo apt get install driftnet space dsniff. That'll get you both packages. And I figured before we go ahead and get started, we're going to actually need to enable what's called packet forwarding. And this basically means that we're going to let the traffic that we're doing as our man in the middle attack flow through our machine. And I know that we've talked about this maybe two years ago, but I think it was a good refresher and we haven't played with DriftNet, so let's, let's have some fun. So I'm in here in my, uh, in my Ubuntu machine, and what I'm gonna do is take a look at this file here. It's, it's slash proc sys net IPv4 and forward, IP underscore forward, right? And I can see that it, the, the file is just zero, right? Well, if I go ahead and say um, echo one waka slash proc sys net IPv4 IP forward, Well, I'm going to have to pseudo bang bang that. Let's try that again. There we go. So if I cat that file again, we can see we've set it to one. So we are all ready, good to go as far as letting our traffic flow us are concerned. So let's go ahead and set up some screens and do a little bit of ARP cache poisoning in Linux. So. I'm going to go ahead and use this to ARP cache poison my own machine. You can see here I'm in a uh, Ubuntu virtual machine, but I'm also over here in Windows as my host. I'm going to check out what my IP address is. And as it has been for the last few episodes, I'm 10, 13, 37, 124 as seen right here. Okay, so in this case, what I want to do is run the command ARP spoof. It's part of the dsniff suite. So. We do ARP spoof tac t for our target, and in this case, we're targeting the router and then my machine. So 10, 13, 37, 1, which we know to be the router, and 10, 13, 37, 124, which is me. And we're going to go ahead and just, actually, I think I might need some root action on that. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a split here in my screen. 
and a new one, and we're gonna do the same thing here, except this time with, um, with basically the reverse of it. So ARP spoof, and then TAC T, and in this case, it's going to be 10, 13, 37, 124 first, and then 10, 13, 37, and one after that. And again, I keep forgetting to pseudo that. All right, so we've got both of those running. Now it's time to have some fun because essentially we are the man in the middle here. Now there's a couple of things that we can do that are built into the dsniff tool that I really like. So if I, you know, say open a, um, I'm gonna create a new screen session here and say, let's, uh, we could run message snarf. So msg snarf, and then we're gonna have to do tac i for our interface, and in this case it's eth0 is our interface. That's gonna go ahead and listen on that interface, which is part of where all of our traffic is being sniffed, and say I were to get on like Yahoo Messenger, Gmail, uh, any of those regular instant messengers, as well as IRC, it would actually go ahead and see all of that traffic, and I could uh, potentially you know, watch somebody's chatting session. Let's see if I have any, any actual IRC clients going on here. Yes, I do. Let's uh, slash server to irc.hack5.org. All right. And I'm talking to the guys up in IRC. There we go. And I can see that all of that is happening in my Ubuntu session. And I can go ahead and talk to localhost and Rizzy Rong and DJ Jeff and all the fun, happy people up in irc.hack5.org. Uh, so let's, that, that's a lot of fun snarfing there. Let's, let's snarf some more stuff. There's, there's other good st stuff to be had here. Another fun tool is URL snarf. And it works the same way. Just issue it with TAC I and the uh, Ethernet interface here in this case. And what this is going to do is I'll come over here and go to, I don't know, um, zombo.com, right? Then it's the best website in the world. Yes, there it is. There are also a whole lot of other tools for snarfing, like mail snarf, which you can imagine all well, it does is sniff emails. Now, what if you're interested in passwords? There's another really good one for that. I'm gonna uh, switch over to another tab here, and we're going to issue dsniff, tac i f zero. Now, dsniff is going to be listening for passwords, all sorts of different types of passwords. If it's just a plain text HTTP login, a telnet session, FTP, whatever. So if I pull up my machine over here, for example, an issue, I don't know, um, FTP to this website here. Now, I'm not actually entering my right password in here because I, I don't want to do that. But uh, if I see that over here, boom, it shows up right there. I can see my username and whatever password it was issued. I mean, pretty easy stuff because it is a plain text protocol and that's why we wanna use things like SSH. Stay tuned for a very future uh, segment on that because we can do some fun man in the middle stuff there. And um, now we should just go ahead and move over to Drift.net because I think that's one of the more fun ones here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill dsniff. Actually, I did not put it in the background. I'll kill it later uh, and run Drift.net and then with the interface, F0. And what we get here is a little pop-up, and right now it's not gonna do anything, but if I are to say, come over to, I don't know, my Facebook, and let's refresh my Facebook, see anything going on there. Paul has an album. All of a sudden, you get tons of info over here. As you can see, it's just going to fill up like crazy. Yeah, it's a real fun tool to just throw up as a visualizer, especially on like a wireless network, and just see what everyone's up to, especially if you can just go ahead and set your wireless card to promiscuous mode, because then you end up with, uh, with tons of fun stuff. Just sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the show. We can actually go ahead and kill all of this fun stuff now by issuing kill all ARP spoof. And there we go. I hope that was educational. I hope you guys have some questions. You guys know that you can send them over to feedback at hack5.org. Let me know what you guys like, if it's Ettercap or whatever, and then you know we'll be having a lot more fun with some more sophisticated man in the middle tags here very shortly. All right, and I think at this point, we are gonna go ahead and head over to Shannon and find out about this week's trivia. Last week's trivia question was, 
what is the prototype that was built in 1998 that encrypts telephone calls using the symmetric encryption algorithm idea? The answer was Cryptophon. This week's question is, what is the name of this prominent computer club that was founded in Berlin in 1981? Answer over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some sweet swag. And now Darren with a word from our sponsor. So let me tell you about FreshBooks. It's an easy to use online invoicing service that's not only gonna make you look more professional, it's gonna get you paid faster. And here's an extra promise, you might actually enjoy invoicing. I know I do a lot more than the spreadsheet I was using before. And check this out, it's completely free. Just head over to freshbooks.com, get yourself a free account. You can use it to invoice up to three clients before you have to even pay for anything. So if you're a small business startup, you just do some consulting work, this is the ticket. And this is really cool. It's something that they're doing just for Hack5 viewers they're actually going to be giving away a birthday cake once a week to somebody who signs up from our show. So basically when you sign up with uh, FreshBooks, go ahead and under the thing where they say, where'd you hear about us? Just go ahead and put in Hack5 and no, it doesn't have to be your birthday cake to win a cake. Who doesn't love birthday cake? Go ahead and give FreshBooks a try at freshbooks.com. Let them know we sent you. In a recent episode, I walked you through how to use FireSheep to hijack another computer session on your wireless network. I was able to see Darren log on to Twitter and I clicked on his username and I wrote on his Twitter account as at Hack5Darren, not as at Snubs. <laughs> yeah, I just hacked his Twitter, right? I know, awesome. Wasn't that hilarious, Darren? Yes. Well, today I'd like to show you Black Sheep, which does the exact opposite. If Fire Ship Sheep is being used by someone on your network, you can be warned and block against it. Black Sheep is a Firefox add-on, just like Fire Sheep, and it was based right off of the same source code. So it reuses the same network listening backend and that same list of sites and corresponding cookies, etc., etc. By doing this, it ensures that the fake traffic generated by Black Sheep is what Fire Sheep is expecting to see. Black Sheep will even show you the IP address of the person's computer trying to attack your account. So now to get it working. First of all, all you have to do is download the Black Sheep add-on over at this Zscaler website. Right down there. Disable Fire Sheep if you have it on as well so that Black Sheep doesn't detect it. And then up in your options menu, you choose the interval you want Black Sheep to create the fake traffic. Its default is on five minutes. But, I mean, that can work just fine. I changed mine to one minute just because I like one minute intervals instead. And then you click OK and you're done configuring. And here I can disable Fire, Fire Sheep so that it doesn't notice. Now, if Fire Sheep is detected on your network, you'll see this little pop-up that pops up on your screen. So I'm capturing. There we go, somebody is using FireSheep on this network and it shows me my own personal ID since I'm using FireSheep on this machine right now, 10.1337.102. That's so cute. Black Sheep is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. You still need WinPCAP if you're on Windows and it only works with the Firefox in only 32-bit. Although Black Sheep does help with FireSheep, you, you should still be using HTTPS for all of your surfing needs. Anyway, go over to the zscaler.com website to check out Black Sheep for yourself. And if you have any other snubs reports that you want me to check out, head over to feedback at hack5.org and send those over to me. We'll be right back after a quick hack tip from Darren. That's right, once again, it is time for the hack tip, and this time it's a quick and dirty way to ID a web server. That is to say, what version of the HTTP daemon that the server is running. And this has gone ahead and sent over from our pal, Wayno, over at pkilltack9. And you know, already, everyone in IRC is mentioning, yeah, you do nmap, tack ss, tack sv, your target, and tack p80. And yes, that's a great way to do it. Thank you, DJ Jeff and everyone in IRC. That's kind of one of the fun way, things that we do here with the shooting the show live and streaming and all that good stuff over at hack5.org. Live, breathing, it's good. So, uh, but here are a couple of ways to pull this off if you don't have Nmap installed. And the first one is to do it with curl. So if you just issue curl, tack capital I, and then your target in this case, hack5.org, 
We're gonna go ahead and see here that we see that the server is running Apache 2.2.15 and we got all this good stuff going. And that's all fine and dandy, but dude, what if you didn't even have Perl? Actually, this is stock Debian and I didn't have Perl. I had to have to install that sucker. Whoa, what, what's up with that, right? Well, there's another way that you can do it and it's real simple. All you have to do is fire up Telnet. Yes, Telnet. So we do Telnet space www.hack5.org and then 80 what we get is that it's gone ahead and connected and thankfully I do have a local echo back so you'll be able to see this. It's pretty simple, but uh, you wanna go ahead and hit caps lock because we're going to need to issue head space slash space HTTP slash 1.0 and then we hit enter twice and boom, there we go, we got the same thing, closes the connection, but we got all the server information here and I see that we are running Apache 2.2.15 which if I come over here, I can see there are already some awesome vulnerabilities for. So we will have that patch before this airs, but hey, how about that? Great way to find out, do a little bit of reconnaissance if you don't have Nmap installed. Uh, you know, what is tickling your guys' technolust? Go ahead and send it our way. It's real simple, all you have to do, hold down the start key, hit run, type in mail to colon tips at hack5.org, and then set, let us know what you think, or if you're the, uh, of the other equation, then use pine. Or is that Elm? It's one of those. Anyway, we'll be back in just a bit after a quick word from one of our sponsors. Do you need a website? How about a website for $8.75 a month? That's right, you can get that over at domain.com. They've got wonderful hosting plans starting from $8.75 all the way to their ultra plan for $15.99. It's great service. They've been hosting hack5.org for over a year now. We couldn't be happier. They got domain names for under 10 bucks a year and you can even get private registration so nobody can see who you are in the Whois database. I recommend that if you need domain uh, registration, if you need a web host, go ahead and check them out. They've got blistering fast DNS infrastructure. They got some of the lowest prices on the web. And honestly, they've been so good to us and our Hack5 fans because you just tweet at domain.com, they get right back to you. They're good people. Go ahead and head over to domain.com. Save yourself 15% at checkout when you use coupon code HAK5. Your next big idea starts at domain.com. All right, before we get going, you guys know we have some excellent emails as well as your Technolust photo of the week. Right, Shannon? Of the century! It's the Technolust photo of the century. Oh my gee, oh my gee, really? Yes. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Darren's like, I didn't know about this. I, did I didn't that, read what? the show notes. Mm, what? <laughs> mm, but first, we have there. emails. A very first email comes from Steve. Steve says, thank you so much for the info you have been giving out on screen and multiplexing screens. I just wanted to make you aware, if you weren't already, of Putty Connection Manager. Download link. <laughs> the most reported feature is the tabbed interface for Putty, but for me, the best feature is the screen splitting. I can have one window with all of my putty sessions open and arranged however I want. Also, you can send commands to all viewable putty sessions, so I can run one command on each of my servers at the same time. That's pretty cool. I checked it out. Ooh. Unfortunately, um, and I got a screenshot of it here up. It looks really cool. Check that out, right? So you can have like boom, boom, boom. But um, the thing that I wasn't so fantastic about is the I guess wherever the site originally came from, or at least right now, is down. Mm -hmm. So I'm not able to see if the source code is available. Uh, Putty, of course, being, a, yeah, they've got a database error and they can't connect to MySQL or whatever. So um, that, that's kind of a bummer because while I think that's great, it is a binary. Putty is something that I use because I know it's open source yeah. and that I know that it's been peer reviewed and I kind of, I get a little hesitant sometimes. Really? With the binaries <laughs> in the window. I don't know. I'm a lot more paranoid since starting the show. Oh, it's okay. Go, go figure. Yeah. Nick writes. But thanks for sending that in. It's really yes, cool. thank you. Nick writes, G-Predict is a real-time satellite tracking and orbit prediction application, and it actually runs better on his XP machine than it does on his Ubuntu machine. That's 10.4.10.10 and Backtrap 4 release two right. laptops. It's really cool. I happen to be a telecommunications satellite comm guy, and this software is really neat because it has all the satellite orbit locations preloaded, and after you put in your geo coordinates, it'll tell you when the satellite will be visible. Awesome. And at what azimuth and elevation, azimuth, yep. 
azimuth sure. we'll go with that. elevation that you should be using to see the beacon via the spectrum analyzer. And if you have no idea what I'm saying, which I don't, you can select all of the military satellites from a drop down list and watch them move over the globe. Neat! So totally I actually, cool. I went ahead and got this, uh, I, I'm playing with it right here. You can see I only have like five satellites available, but I can totally see where they're looping around. Whoa. So what's neat about this is you see this yellow line, I'm imagining, uh, oh, okay, so that's the yellow line, that's the dot is where that satellite is. And dude, I, I, you're gonna have to email us back and, and, and show us how to do this because we need to do a segment on like stellar photography, uh, show you guys how to oh, create your yeah. own uh, time-lapse meter thingy with a couple of switches on your so like, cool. camera so you can take pictures of the stars and I want to catch one of these. I love stargazing and whenever you see like ISS go by and stuff, it's just so cool. So awesome. um, I got to figure out how to use Oh this look, program. it just moved. Yeah. Did you that, see that? Oh, that's <gasps> ISS. There you go. That's awesome. How neat is that? Select satellite. Let's see if we can get that going. ISS, yeah. There we go. So cool. Um, but it's like above South America right now, and that doesn't yeah. really do me any good. Oh well. Cool. Yeah. All right, two Euro writes, hey guys, gotta say I love your show. I couldn't make it better if I tried. And I was wondering what's with the stuff on the screens in the background behind Snubs in episode 906? It looks like it's saying stuff about Mimi beer and pizza. <laughs> Yeah, they get excited about beer and pizza. What do you expect? They're yeah. IRC goers. Um, this is our Hack 5 IRC. Yeah, so props go out to Meta and the Doctor and John G. Retro. And DJ Jeff and Bugs Bunny and Power Seth Panda Ram. and Ethan and Logan and Newbies. Newbie! And, uh, okay, see, now it's just, okay. now that they know that Everybody's there's Everybody's going to like, Alex right. Acker. <laughs> but tea? you guys know um, that we shoot the show the on Wednesdays. We stream it live over at hack5.org slash live. And you should start seeing a lot more fun developments with Hack 5 and live streaming. So uh, head over to hack5.org as soon as you can because you will probably see some announcements there as well as maybe over at revision3.com. We hope you guys can join us whenever we get our stream on because it's a lot of fun. We have some beers, we get the IRC going. It's good stuff. Speaking of good times, so there was a LAN recently. A guy named Ryan had emailed us and he said, hey man, I'm having a LAN coming up soon. You know, want to bring us some stickers so we can give them away as prizes? And we were like, sure man, whatever. So we sent him some photos, or sent him some stickers. Photos, some stickers. He sent us some photos That's of his works. awesome LAN. It looks like everybody had a really good time. I, I gotta say, I miss, I miss LAN parties. Did you do the LAN party thing back in the day? A little bit. You tote your computer around? I think around. one of my favorites was when we went to that weekend one in Virginia. Yes, what is it called? Uh, East Coast Land. East Coast Land. It was one yeah. of the best land parties I've ever been times. to in Virginia. They still, I know that there are still a couple of big ones. There's one in Texas, the, um, the QuakeCon thing. Oh, of I don't course. know of any in yeah. the Bay Area or just California in general, but I would totally go to an epic land party. If you guys know the hookup on that, email us because, you know, yes. that's what feedback.hack5.org is for. Is for those Technolust Youth photos. They like are the for land. Those photos. Or this Technolust photo of the century. Yeah. So, Robert, he sent in this scanned ad from 1989 that he just up and found somewhere. It's this Tandy 5000 MC professional system for $8,500. $8,500. Wow, that reminds me of the XKCD comic. Uh, 1996, where they're all talking about, hey, check this out, 1996, $3,000 would get you a 100 megahertz Pentium and all this stuff. And then they're like, ah, oh, $300 oh would get God. you a Palm Pilot 100 or whatever. And they're like, and $110 would get you a bulky TI graphing calculator with around 100 or 10 megahertz CPU, 24K of RAM, and a six, or 96 by 64 oh, pixel black terrible. and white display. <laughs> Time sure of, uh, what the hell, TI? And then it goes on to basically diss TI. Because come on, why is it still the same price for the same crappy, crappy calculator TI? Seriously. I, know, right? I hate those things. But it really sucks because Ugh. you can't, in, like in a lot of universities and CS programs and other programs like that, you can't just use like a PDA or a pocket PC or a, yeah. or a OQL or whatever you want. Because you can do too much with it. Yeah, I know, right? Ooh. It's like, dude. You're like, oh no. Oh no, None it's of those color. in here. You must buy one of those hundred something odd dollar calculators. Yeah, yeah. I had that one. I, I ran into that problem taking the SATs. No fun. Yeah. But All Robert, right, thank you for that picture. That's hilarious. Like, did people really spend that much money in 1989 for a computer? Holy Jesus, right. Batman. Actually, I got mine off uh, the newspaper. IBM PC XT. Oh, that's right, 4. yeah. 4.77 <laughs> megahertz. I got mine from my dad. I don't know what it was, my first one. It was a family one. 
But if you have fit photos, doesn't have to be a scan photo from 1989, but if you do have one that's pretty sweet, email us at feedback at hack5.org and we'll show your Titan OS photos in upcoming episodes. Also remember, you can support the show for free and easy simply by subscribing on iTunes or YouTube, Miro, however you want to get your Titan OS delivered to you automatically. Just to download it! Yeah! yeah. Okay, Sorry. get it at hackfab.org. <laughs> slash subscribe for all the details we need to wrap or up Or snubs quick. will. Ah! We need I need my candy. Okay, also Hack5 goodies over at? Hackshop.com. Yay, she calmed down. Until next <laughs> week, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your tech Remember knowledge. Remember to trust your tech knowledge. Woo! Nice, nice. All right. Little, 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 noodly little. Well, that's gonna end up somewhere. Yay! Uh, it's a shame we're not on. Oh, we're not. No, we're not. Stop nice making try. a fool nice of try. myself. <laughs>